Welcome to today's lecture on private multiplicative weights. I want to acknowledge that today's lecture was uh, prepared with some help from Sasha Nikolov and Aaron Roth. In particular, the first half of today's lecture is based around lecture notes provided by Aaron Roth, and I've linked these on the website. So let's start by talking about linear queries. Linear queries are a very common type of qu query we want to ask uh, when doing differentially private data analysis, and uh, they're a generalization of the counting or subset queries, which uh, we've talked about. So the only difference is that uh, the range of the function will be uh, the interval 0, 1 rather than the set, just the number 0, 1. So if you don't remember uh, subset or counting queries, uh, don't worry too much. Let's, uh, let's, we'll define the setting. Um, so a linear query has a domain. So the domain is going to be some set x. And we have, uh, you know, some alphabet, which is of uh, a bunch of different symbols. And what a linear query is, is it is a function. It's a function q, which takes an element from this uh, domain. And it maps it to the interval 0, 1. Like I said, a counting query would just have the numbers either 0 or 1. Um, but here now we're going to generalize it a bit to say uh, the interval 0, 1. And uh, we're also going to overload this to refer to the function applied to a data set as well. So uh, it's a bit of cheating, but the point is a function, uh, a, a linear query when applied to a data set, so q of x, uh, where x is a data set, say x is in, say x to the n, this is equal to the average of this uh, function applied to the elements in the data set. And so this is summing over i in n. So essentially just applies the uh, function to each point in the data set, uh, gets a value between 0 and 1, and just averages that over uh, the data set. So let me remind you of uh, two, uh, and, and what we're, let me, I'll give you a few examples in a little bit. But essentially, the question that we're going to ask with linear queries is suppose we have a set, uh, sort of capital Q, of uh, queries. Uh, So this is a bunch of functions like uh, this lowercase q. And the question is, how large does a data set have to be in order to answer all of them up to accuracy uh, less than, say, some alpha? But more specifically, we want a mechanism or an algorithm, m, which takes in a data set of size n, and it maps it to uh, you know, values for everything in the set. So you can see this has one entry between 0 and 1 for every uh, query in the set Q. And we want it such that uh, we want the following guarantee for all queries in uh, Q. We want that you know, the algorithm agrees on all of them. So m sub j on x minus q sub j on x. I'll say for all the say qj uh, is less than or equal to alpha. And of course, we also want, since this is a, uh, a privacy class, we want that m is dp. And it's either uh, like, you know, pure or approximate dp. We'll, we'll say when we're doing which. So yeah, this is pretty, pretty standard. So uh, the idea is you just have a set of queries and you want to approximate the value of all of them when applied to the data set. Let me give you just a few examples, just because it's a little bit abstract, but here, so just so you have something to think about. Um, there's two of the most common uh, types of queries would be, say, uh, histograms. Um, so let's see. Well, well, one is, let's say, histograms. And that's essentially uh, looking at a set of queries where, uh, you know, it essentially takes each element of the domain and maps it to either 0 or 1, where, like, so maybe it's just easier if I just write it out. So this would be the set of uh, uh, queries, q, let's say q sub hist. Uh, this is of size, it's going to be equal to the domain size. So, you know, this is the number of elements in the domain. And we're going to have a query in it for each uh, element of the domain. So, you know, q 
uh, sub s x. This is going to be the query uh, for the, um, no, let me change that. Let's just say query sub q sub s. This is going to be equal to, uh, you know, on applied on some data point, uh, say x. This is going to be equal to, uh, it'll be one if x is equal to s and zero otherwise. So you can see that this is sort of like an indicator function. And this is like, if you can answer all of these queries at the same time on a data set, then you have essentially a histogram with low uh, error for each point. Okay, so that's one example. Another thing is called, say, marginal queries. And this is, applies when we have uh, the domain uh, where, uh, say, the domain x is equal to, say, like, uh, a binary hypercube or something, so 0, 1 to the d. And here we have, uh, we have a, let's say we're just looking at one-way marginal, so like q marge. Uh, this is going to be a set of d different uh, queries. And in particular, uh, it'll be the queries such that, uh, how, do, how should we say this? Um, q sub, uh, let's say, Q sub j on some point uh, x. This is going to be equal to one if uh, x sub like uh, j is equal to one and zero otherwise. I guess we, we can just write it even more concisely actually. Uh, let's just write this as x sub j. So basically it takes the jth coordinate of the input. Remember that this is an element in the hypercube and it outputs one if it's that and zero otherwise. So this would let you, if you had this entire family of all these queries, um, then you could answer, you know, you, this, is, this is a set of queries you might reasonably want to answer uh, for a data set uh, simultaneously. You, so, you know, maybe you have a different, uh, uh, you have a bunch of different dimensions and different features and you want to ask what fraction of the population say is, uh, what, what, what is the sex of, uh, you know, the population uh, the fraction of different sexes, um, you know, uh, hair color, stuff like that. Those would be different types of marginal queries. Of course, I guess these are non, not necessarily binary que uh, queries, but the point is, you know, you might want to ask some question independently about what the distribution is over each marginal. And similarly, histograms are a natural type of query you'd want to answer as well, all of these simultaneously. Now, these are very nicely structured sets of queries, but we're going to be focused on the case where we don't know, like there's better algorithms for these specific types of queries, marginals and histograms, but we're not gonna be focused too much on uh, these two classes. We're gonna be trying to design an algorithm which is as general as possible. That is given any sort of set of queries, we want to answer, uh, we want to answer you know, all of them simultaneously, no matter how weird they are. They're just arbitrary things within uh, the linear query space the space of linear queries. Okay, so what can we say about this? What, what do we know about this problem already if we just wanna answer a general set of linear queries? Well, there's a lot of uh, different algorithms we already know actually. Um, first of all, uh, there's the Laplace mechanism. So what can you do uh, for the Laplace mechanism? Well, you can just do it very simply. You know, you let m sub j of x be equal to, uh, you know, you, you just ask the query itself on the data set, but then you add Laplace noise. And you add Laplace noise of uh, magnitude, uh, yeah, size of Q over epsilon N. Where did this come from? Well, uh, this, this one over N is the sensitivity. So this one over epsilon is what we need for privacy. And this Q here in the numerator is for a composition. We just use basic composition um, because we're going to answer all Q of uh, these. Uh, we answer this for all QJ in the set Q. And this is it, this is all we have to do. And the question is, what sort of sample complexity, what do we need for N in order to get uh, the error to be less than or equal to alpha for all of these simultaneously? Well, um, if you just sort of work it out, you see that you need n to be greater than or equal to size of q log size of q divided by alpha epsilon. 
And one thing I'll note is that, you know, why, why did this log come in? Well, that's just due to a, a union bound in terms of the magnitude of the Laplace random variables. Basically just look, using a tail bound and a, then a union bound over how big their tails can be. So that's where this log came in. It turns out it's actually possible to improve this. Um, it's possible to get it all the way down to um, Q over alpha epsilon. Uh, there's some, some constants in front of these, but we're not going to worry too much about those. So this is one sample complexity. This is a result by Stein Kinelman. And it turns out that this is like optimal up to constant factors. You can get rid of this log and that's the best you can do. Um, and of course this is epsilon dp. So that's one algorithm. Now there's more algorithms. Um, in particular, you can do the same type of, uh, the same type of, um, the, the same type of uh, thing just using the Gaussian mechanism. And if you do this and you apply, you know, advanced composition in the appropriate way, then the sample complexity that you would get here is you would get that n, we need it to be greater than or equal to uh, c times uh, square root this time, size of q, log size of q, uh, log one over delta under the square root, and over the same alpha epsilon. So you'll see this is like uh, quite a bit better. It's the square root of Q instead of Q. Um, in fact, it's actually possible to improve this. Uh, there's one in the same paper by Stein Kinelman, they improved this to a log log Q under it. And there's a rather recent paper um, by, uh, sorry, let me get the reference for you, um, by Ganesh and Zhao, um, which actually gets it down to, let me write the sample complexity here because uh, it's rather interesting. Um, size of q, log, log, log of size of q times log one over delta uh, over alpha epsilon. So you can see that this is very close to just being square root of q, tantalizingly close to getting rid of all these uh, log factors, um, but nobody knows how to get rid of it yet. Uh, there's actually an open problem by Stein Kinelman. If you can remove this log 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 factor and get it down to just square root of q, then you win a $500 sushi dinner. So that's some incentive for you. Okay, so these are two different algorithms we have. Um, you know, these are uh, we have a pure DP algorithm and a approximate DP algorithm, and these are kind of both ar around the best you can do for this problem. But the downside is that they're both polynomial in the uh, in the size of the set Q. And you might wonder, can you do better? For example, like in the worst case, no, you can't do better. But I claim that if you're working on a, uh, if you're working on a limited domain, for example, like we, we notice how neither of these incur anything that depends on the domain size. If you're willing to incur something that domain depends on the domain size, you can in fact do better. Um, there's another approach, which is sort of a histogram based approach. This is described in, uh, uh, theorem 2.9 of Vadan's survey. I, I don't I don't know a different reference. It might just be folklore, but uh, it turns out there's sort of a histogram based method which can do uh, it can do uh, the same type of query uh, solve linear queries as well as long as you have n greater than or equal to square root of uh, the domain size times log of uh, size of q divided by alpha epsilon. So I don't know better reference between uh, theorem besides theorem two point nine of uh, Vadan. May it might have bibliographic uh, email or info there. Okay, so these are three different uh, sample complexity bounds we have. But now, so while we've got down to uh, to something which is logarithmic in the number of queries, now it's polynomial in the domain size. But this might be really terrible. For example, you know, a common domain might be if we're dealing with uh, the Boolean hypercube, uh, or we have like d different features in our vector, then in that case, you would have an exponential in d uh, dependence, which is something we'd like to avoid. So the real question is, can we get beyond this? And can we do well in both parameters at the same time? We'd ideally like something which is logarithmic in both the size of the domain, as well as the size of the, uh, as well as the size of the, uh, the, the number of queries we're asking. And it turns out there are algorithms. We'll just, uh, sorry, let me mention that this is, of course, epsilon dp. Um, there are 
algorithms. One is the, the one which we're not going to cover in this class, but it's quite a nice algorithm and uh, you should uh, read it. Um, it's called the small db algorithm of Blum, Liggett, and Roth. Um, small db, it's called, the reason it's called small db is because it only works on rather small databases. But uh, this has a sample complexity of n, uh, it needs n to be greater than roughly up to log factors. This tilde here means I'm, mis uh, uh, I'm hiding and om or omitting log factors that which depend on the terms. Um, so you can get log of size of q and log of size of x, uh, the domain divided by uh, alpha cubed times epsilon. So this is great. Uh, this is great in the sense that, uh, you know, it's, it's a logarithmic in both parameters, uh, in both the domain size and the number of queries and, you know, polynomial and everything else, which are usually reasonable sized. Uh, it gives epsilon dp. Yeah, there's a really nice algorithm based around the exponential mechanism. I recommend reading it and trying to understand it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, the downside and kind of the reason why we're not covering it in this class is because the running time is pretty abysmal. It only really works on uh, small databases, um, but it's going to be size of the domain raised to the power of O of uh, log size of Q uh, divided by alpha squared. So this is not very practical at all, and this is not really an algorithm you would want to run uh, on anything besides the smallest uh, types of things. In particular, remember we were trying to avoid an, uh, we, we, we sometimes thought of the domain size as being rather large, you know, exponential in the dimension. Um, and if it's already exponential in the dimension and you're raising it to the power of something like this, then, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're out of luck. This is gonna take an, an immense amount of time. But the nice thing is the fact that maybe what we'd like to keep is the fact that uh, we had this nice uh, sample complexity. We really had both logarithmic and Q as well as logarithmic in uh, the size of the domain. So that's where uh, today's, uh, uh, the theorem for today comes in, um, which is the celebrated algorithm of uh, private multiplicative weights. And this gets uh, an even better sample complexity, but that's because uh, we're going to be working in uh, um, a prox DP. But you need n to be greater than or equal to uh, O tilde of log of size of Q again. Now we actually get a little bit better in terms of the other parameters. Uh, we get law, square root of log of the domain size, log one over delta, as we sort of usually get for a prox DP algorithms, divided by alpha squared times epsilon. So this is uh, the private multiplicative weights algorithm of Hart and Rothblum, which has been refined by a few others, um, which you can check the notes for. But yeah, this is uh, the algorithm, the running, or sorry, this is the sample complexity of the algorithm. Uh, the running time I'll mention is, you know, it's kind of linear in all parameters, which is kind of not great, uh, you know, uh, size of domain. It's not great, but it turns out that this type of thing, this, this type of running time is actually, in some sense, the best uh, we can expect for this type of problem, if, if, since it gives us answers in a synthetic data set in certain things. Um, based on standard cryptographic assumptions, this is kind of like we can't really hope for a better uh, running time. Um, but I'll refer you to a paper by Ullman and Vadan for more info on that. So this is a very nice algorithm. Um, it fits into the celebrated, uh, pro like the multiplicative weights uh, framework. This multiplicative weights framework and algorithm is one of the most useful algorithms that you will ever learn in the sense that it pops up all over the place and it can make uh, your life a lot easier in many settings of algorithm design. So this is the first segment, but in the second segment, it'll be completely focused on just the, uh, the multiplicative weights framework uh, no mention of privacy at all. And in the last uh, section, we're going to bring it back and talk about how to actually do uh, use, use this algorithm in order to solve this query release problem and achieve the sample complexity that I'm claiming here.